everyone, this is Matt White, uh, Dr. White to my students. If you're wondering where I am, I'm in my garage because I made this video today and I forgot to record an intro. So that's why I'm in a really strange space and my kids are sleeping right now. Uh, I didn't want to disturb them because my office is right next door to them. So anyways, I made a video today that's uh, talking about some principles of voice leading on two fives, how to compose your own lines. Um, so before we get started, a couple things. There's some ground rules for this exercise, which are useful in terms of constructing your lines. Number one is that we want to make sure that we play chord tones on the strong harmonic beats. So that's the root, third, fifth, or seventh on beats one and three of the chord change. Number two, generally speaking for the contour, we're going to arpeggiate up and go scale wise down. Uh, and then number three, we're going to use chromaticism, but we want to use it on weaker rhythmic locations. So like ands of twos and ands of fours. And we want to use it in a way that helps us have smoother voice leading to our arrival point, those chord tones on beats one and three. So check it out. Okay, so here's our basic framework. We've got a two, five, one, D minor seven to G seven to C. And you'll notice here on the strong beats, beats one and three, or at least the strong beats harmonically, we're playing chord tones. We're going from the third to the root, to the third, to the flat seven, to the third. Here, we're kind of filling in the framework a little bit more. So now I'm using quarter notes, but still thinking about notes in the key, they're gonna to resolve to where my strong beats are on beats one and three. So you'll see here that we move up to the D, up to the B natural, down to the F, and then doing kind of like an enclosure of that D moving up to the E on the resolution of the C. So here's our finished project following some of the rules that we just already talked about. So here I'm arpeggiating up from the third to the nine, going down to the D on beat three on the D minor seven. Now I could keep going down the scale here, but if I kept going down the scale, I would end up landing on the root, not the third of the G7. So what I've done here is jump down to the A and then put a little chromatic passing tone in a weak rhythmic spot, which is the end of four, that B flat. I do the same exact thing for resolution on the and of two on the G7, and also the and of four with the E flat moving up to the E natural. Here is the exact same lick, but what we've done now is we've displaced the octave. So this is a thing I like to practice because you can take something that sounds super inside, but by changing the shape of it or the octave that the notes are being placed in, you can make it sound a little more angular and interesting. Here's the exact same original lick that we had, the eighth note lick, but what I've done here is instead of having it all eighth notes, I've changed some of the rhythms, right? So instead of going up the arpeggio, I'm holding onto the F natural for a while before playing the E on the end of two. You'll notice this is the exact same note series, and then what I do is I anticipate the resolution to the E natural for C on the end of four. Here's the exact same framework with different note choices. So you'll notice that I'm still going from F to D to B natural to F to E in the exact same rhythmic locations, but I'm also using chromaticism and some force to kind of mask the tonality of it. However, it should still sound like you're playing the changes. Okay. So now that you've got an idea how to do it, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and post your own in the comments, both a transcription of a line that you composed yourself that would work great over a 2-5, and also a video or audio clip of you playing it. I'll have more of these coming out, so check them out. Thanks.